Well, good morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is at the center of our faith, welcome to worship this morning. To those who of you who are joining us on Facebook Live, I invite you to leave a comment or a prayer request. We'd love to know that you're worshiping with us this morning. For those of you who have joined us via Zoom, there'll be an opportunity for conversation following uh, the service. I'll break you up into rooms and you can have some conversation with one another. Uh, Betty Kemp is acting as co-host this morning, so if you've forgotten to mute yourself, uh, she'll probably mute you for you. And if anybody is a late arrival, she will let you in. And Christina Williams is uh, co-leading worship with me this morning. It is her voice that you will hear in the response of pieces and the reading of scripture. I'm going to save the rest of the announcements uh, for the very end. As we gather for worship here in Nova Scotia, we are mindful that we gather on unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. And so may we live with respect on this land and in peace Why and friendship Why? with its people. We don't want this In the Gospel of Matthew, a messenger appears as a sign from God, heralding a new era. The words, do not be afraid, appear, offering a clue that the messenger was referencing something that induced fear in the recipient. But a new way of being together, of relating and loving, takes courage putting away the present order of things so that a new and better way can be born. I did it again, didn't I? I forgot to uh, put the music on. Okay, so who is not muted yet? Um, Betty, can you take a scroll through the participants list that's on the bottom and see who's not muted and mute them, all except for Christine? Um, so I'm going to try that one more time. I even have it on in big red letters on my um, order of service to turn on the sound. Um. We believe in love. We believe in love, even when, even when we don't feel it. We believe in love. We believe in love. I invite you to join in the responses. The emptiness of loneliness. The emptiness of loneliness. The wounds inflicted. 
The wounds inflicted. The fear of the other. The fear of the other. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of daring love. Christine? Oh, it's not bolded. Even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle. Even when we cannot see a better day, when we will act like the human family we are. Ignite the flame of love within us. That we might glow with its brilliance from the inside out. Help us face this fear of difference and dare to see what love can do. Amen. And our opening hymn is Come Touch Our Hearts. No, it's not. You're, you've got, if you've got your candles, I invite you to light them now. And this is Layla and Lucas who are lighting the Advent candles. I invited them to come to the church on uh, Wednesday afternoon. Touch our hearts that we may know compassion from failing embers build a blazing fire love strong enough to overturn injustice to seek a world more gracious come touch and bless our hearts Touch our souls that we may know and love you. Your quiet presence from our fears dispel. Create a space for spirit to grow in us. Let life and beauty fill us. Come touch and bless our souls. Come touch our minds and teach us how to reason. Set free our thoughts to wonder and to dream. Help us to open doors of understanding to welcome truth and wisdom come touch and bless our mind come touch us in the moments we are fragile and in our weakness your grace 
great strength to redeem that we may rise to follow and to serve steady now our nerve come touch and bless our wills come touch us now this people who I invite you to look directly into your computer, uh, into the camera, and share a sign of peace with one another and look around. You can either just do this, share a sign of peace, or I think the um, ASL sign for peace is this. You hold your hands like this and then go like this. So I invite you to share a sign of peace with one another. Awesome. Thank you. Because even though we're apart, we can still live in peace with one another. And so we let our light shine just like those Advent candles. And so we're going to sing a couple of verses of this little light of mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I let it under a bushel. Will you join me in a moment of prayer? May these words, offered with humility and hope, draw us closer to you, O God, and one another. Amen. We're celebrating the um, themes of Advent a little bit of out of order. For those of you who may know them better as love, peace, joy, and love, we're no sorry as hope peace joy and love we're celebrating them as hope love joy and peace this year love so much more than a feeling i'm going to tell you a couple of stories i'm going to delve into the passage and then wrap it all up with a poem from maya angelo a long time ago, as a self-employed single parent, Christmas was a very financially stressful time for me. I'm a pretty private person and I didn't share that with 
too many people, but for whatever reason, I did share it with a friend from the church I was attending at the time. And she said, what do you need? And I told her, and she said, I'll bring it next week. And she did. No questions asked, no diminishment of me as a person. It was just love simply enacted. Love so much more than a feeling. Another story. A week or so ago, I copied and pasted this message on Facebook. We are now a solid eight months into this. The holidays are coming. If you are not working or not getting a paycheck or struggling to make ends meet and run out of food or necessities, please don't let yourself or your children go to sleep with an empty stomach. If you need a few gifts to give your children at Christmas, don't be afraid or embarrassed to send me a private message. I'm happy to help. I will drop and go or order for delivery. No one has to know and I will pretend that it never happened. I thought I might get a couple of messages from folks. What I didn't expect was to get a message from somebody in Saskatchewan. And the woman simply wrote, did you mean what you said? And I'm like, what? <laughs> She said, would you help someone in Saskatchewan? Now, what's your first reaction? I know what mine was. Skepticism, right? It was a week where I had received three phone calls from the RCMP telling me that there was a warrant out for my arrest. And I'm not sure how many emails that I'd gotten telling me that I had won something. But I stopped and I reminded myself what I had posted. And I also remembered hearing something once about a particular ministry of a church. And that person had said, we're willing to be taken advantage of if it means helping people. So the, this woman and I chatted online some more. I checked out her Facebook pro profile and in one of my ministry Facebook groups, I asked if there was anyone in ministry in that town. And somebody responded. And so she and I, the minister there and I chatted and she said, yes, of course we can help her. And I, so I, I said, I offered to spend, send some money and they said, no, no need. It's part of our ministry to the community. But you know what? I'm going to send them some, some money anyway. Love so much more than a feeling. And it's such an incredible feeling to know that this is a united church connected across the country and, you know, Facebook gets bashed all the time. And sure, there's some really deep, dark places that you can go on Facebook and like, don't read the comments sometimes, right? But it's an awesome way of connecting with others across the country in order to give assistance and joy and help to somebody in need. Love so much more than a feeling. We have no idea if Joseph felt the kind of romantic love for Mary that we normally associate with marriage. What we do know that he's, he demonstrated love in his care for her after overcoming his fears. Listen to the account of Jesus' birth according to the Gospel of Matthew. It's in chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. When he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet I Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. 
When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no mantle relation, marital relationship, relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. Joseph doesn't figure all that prominently in our scriptures. In fact, I think the last reference to him is when he and Mary found Jesus in the temple teaching the elders. But Joseph, in naming him Jesus, named him as his own. It's a critical piece in the story of Jesus' birth. But let's back up a little bit and have a scripture lesson. It can be challenging for a minister to preach on the passages during Advent and Christmas because the story is so familiar to us. Familiar not, uh, not, familiar not just for those of us who've been part of a faith community, but also familiar through our culture, which despite its secularity still communicates the history of Christian prominence in ritual and in celebration. <coughs> In Matthew's gospel, there's no angels announcing Jesus' birth. There's no shepherds. There's no census. There's no trip to Bethlehem. Just Mary and Joseph already living there. Only wise men, and they show up much later. Most people don't realize that what we usually see in a typical stable scene is a conflation or combining of two very different stories. So what are the essentials of the story or the stories? For me, it's that Jesus was born, that Jesus lived, and that Jesus continues to live in the lives of those who follow his teachings. But long before he grew up, he was named and claimed by Joseph. Who knows how Joseph may have felt when he discovered that Mary was pregnant before they had been sexually intimate? Who knows how he might have felt when an angel of God visited him in a dream and told him that Mary had not dishonored him? Who knows how challenging it may have been for Joseph to step outside the social conventions of his day that told him that he should divorce Mary and instead he married her and take on a child that he knew was not his own. But he did. And in adopting Jesus as his own, in naming and claiming him, he has given us a powerful example of how to draw the circle of love wide. Love so much more than a feeling. Maya Angela wrote a poem entitled Touched by an Angel. We, unaccustomed to courage, exiles from delight, live coiled in shells of loneliness until love leaves its high holy temple and comes into our sight to liberate us into life. Love arrives and in its train come ecstasies, old memories of pleasures, ancient histories of pain. Yet if we are bold, love strikes away the chains of fear from our souls. We are weaned from our timidity. In the flush of love's light, we dare to be brave. And suddenly we see that love costs all we are and will ever be. Yet it is only love that sets us free. Are we ready to be set free? Are we ready to welcome Jesus? Not just as that cute, sweet, helpless little baby, but as the man who grew up to challenge the social conventions and practices of his day, just as Joseph did. 
the man who demonstrated love as so much more than a feeling over and over again. The man that grew up and asked more of his followers, more than they ever anticipated or expected. The man that was so sure of his purpose that he was willing to go for, to his death. Can we welcome that Jesus this Christmas? Thanks be to God for the challenge and the opportunity that was born in Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to invite As Byron. You said, uh, Sorry. <laughs> As we started last week, our worship series this Advent calls on the power of music that has always called humanity to a brighter tomorrow. Rather than turn away from music in sorrow, we always turn towards the story of music and deepen our appreciation of its role in healing, change, and reconciliation. Indeed, on this Sunday with love, it, at our center, we can attest that probably love songs top the charts in the history of human song. This week, I watched the documentary film called Girls on the Wall. The girls in this documentary are juvenile offenders in prison. And a drama teaches them in writing the story of their lives and creates a musical out of it as they allow the process and the music to penetrate their heart and hearts, they find that their desire for love is the key to moving forward in their own healing and rehabilitation. I'll post some more information about this film uh, after the service. Now we have a video for you of an anthem called Love Has Broken Down the Walls. This anthem has become a favorite youth choirs and other choirs across the country. Young people are showing us what it means to accept each other's diversity as a global community. And we pray that this continues as time moves on. The song, Love Has Broken Down the Walls by Mark Miller.
In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps when even our thoughts, our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, it's important to, it's an important act to call out, to name and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, it's a prophetic act to call out, name and claim our belief in the hope for tomorrow. Hear these statements of belief and you can respond and you'll hear Christine respond with the yellow text. I believe that we have been taught to fear one another and we believe that we are capable of learning to love. I believe that our society is built on a foundation of oppression and some over others and I believe that we can speak this truth and move to act in ways that balance this inequity. I believe that we are afraid and I believe that we can lean on each other and God for courage to face anything. I believe even when we are discouraged. We believe that when we are discouraged, raising our voices for justice will bring, more, will bring about more love in the world. We believe, we believe, we believe, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy be name. name. Our, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Love so much more than a feeling. Love is how we share what we have with others. Love is how the world becomes a place full of faith and hope and community. And so there are ways to share yourselves, your lives and your financial givings, your generosity. You can drop off a check at the church uh, or a secure mailbox. You can e-transfer, you can sign up for pre-authorized remittance because all of those whether it's to pay something as mundane as the heating bill or the light bill or salaries for that make worship and internet possible, they are all ways of creating faith and love and community. And so we believe and we are going to sing our offering song. Believe and shine your light. Believe because the song we sing is song for all. And now let the weak say we are strong. Let the poor say we are rich because of what our God has done for us. Believe. you to get into a comfortable position. I invite you to get as quiet and as still as you can. I invite you to take a deep breath and enter into a deep listening posture. Perhaps eyes closed or fixed on your candle as we prepare for a time of prayer.
gentle pull of God is often lost amidst the rush of all the obligations which lay a claim on us. Yet just beyond the frantic pace our restless feet have trod the deep still pools of quietness the dwelling place of God meet us in the stillness Lord Blessed are you, boundless source of grace. For you cover us with the beauty of your glory and show us your splendor in all that you have made. We give you thanks for the bright glitter of the morning star, bravely shining in the first pink flush of dawn. We give you thanks for the intricate web of dark wet branches outlined against the deep blue sky of evening. We give you thanks for the warmth of friendship, for laughter, for cookies and cocoa, and for the exuberant abundance of your unfailing love. We give you thanks for all that we can name and for all that we do not even notice. Blessed are you, compassionate Savior, for you have looked favorably on all your people, promising that the dawn from on high will break upon the world, giving light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. In this season of short days and long nights, we pray that you will shelter those who sleep outdoors protecting each one who lives in fear of violence and strengthening those who pour out their lives that others might live. 
In these days of waiting for the light, we pray that you will bring freedom to all who are oppressed, healing to those who are broken in body and or spirit, and comfort to all who mourn. Today, we remember especially the anniversary of the Halifax explosion for all who died that day and the days to come and all who rushed forward to bring holy healing and hope to a devastated city. We also remember 14 women gunned down in Montreal simply because they were women. In these days of preparing the way for your coming, we pray that you will grant wisdom to all who make the rules, give courage to all who must follow them, and guide those who wage war into the ways of peace. For the needs that are known to us and for the needs that are known only to you, O God, we pray. Amen. The Carol of Resistance, it came upon the midnight clear. Our Carol of Resistance was written in 1849 by a Massachusetts Unitarian minister, Reverend Edmund Hamilton Sears. Many hymn books have left out verse, out verse three over the past number of decades, although the United Church's hymn book, right back to the blue hymnary have always included it. It's the, it's the powerful verse that refers to the love song of the angels being drowned out by our warning nature. Yet with the woes of sin and strife, the world has suffered long. Beneath the angels strain have rolled 2000 years of wrong. And we at war on earth hear not the love song which they bring Oh, hush the noise and cease the strife and hear the angels sing. Let us be reminded that we are to listen to the angel chorus and then join it. Raise our voices with the message that love, not hate, is the answer. Sad and lonely place. 
What a perfect ending to that, to the service. We wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so, my friends, like bells ringing out the news, that the sun still shines even on cloudy days. Fill the night left by sadnesses, sadness with messages of hope. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep hope alive in you and that spur you on in the work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me, do not be afraid, do not be afraid. Amen. So there are a few announcements that I'll share with you before I put you into breakout rooms. I'm going to, I'll leave the, I'll leave the uh, live stream on until I finish up with the announcements. So next Sunday afternoon is the online carol sing and memory tree lighting. If you haven't sent in your requests for um, carols that you would like to sing that day, you need to have them in by noon on Tuesday in order for Tamara to put together the bulletin for that service and in order for Byron to record them in time uh, to have that happen. And we're delighted that uh, Dunnery Bond is going to sing a couple of them for us that afternoon. And um, if you're in in bubbles with somebody who doesn't have an internet connection, invite them over for the afternoon and enjoy some time together and enjoy some community time together and enjoy each other's company. Um, as you know, or most of you by now know that uh, because Dr. Strang has said that, well, he extended the restrictions to the 16th, I believe it was. And so the executive has made the decision that there's not gonna be any in-person worship until at least January. Um, we didn't make that decision lightly. Um, it's in order to keep everybody healthy and safe and so I invite you to please pray for us as we made that decision. And um, we hope that you understand that. And we're, Byron and I are busily creating worship that is as creative and as welcoming and as true to the Christmas spirit as possible. Christmas isn't about gathering in one spot, even though I know we're all going to miss it. But Christmas is about what is born, remembering Jesus' birth. And so that will happen no matter where we are. So I invite you to take part in all of the, all of the services that you can, in any way you can, that will happen as it can. We are getting a student from AST in January. Her name is Jessie Crabtree. Crabtree. Uh, Stairs has a long history of supporting and engaging students, and I'm sure this time will be no different. A uh, lay supervision team has been arranged. Uh, Jesslyn Dalton, Christine Eight, uh, Trevor Colasar, and Larry McDonald have all agreed to serve in that capacity. Jessie is a first year student at the Atlantic School of Theology. She moved from Maine because she's in a, a United Church of Christ student. Um, she moved from Maine in June with her husband and two sons. And uh, she said that after quarantine, quarantining for two weeks this summer, they had a fantastic summer exploring Nova Scotia. 
And before pursuing work in the church, Jesse spent two years working as a chocolatier. Sounds interesting, doesn't it? And eight years working in adult education. And she's very much looking forward to getting to know the STAIRS community. And I think I saw Sandra sign in. Sandra, can you unmute yourself if you're here and just let us know um, about the cookie sale? Hi, everybody. As you know, um, every, well, I think everybody knows everything went really well. Um, the cookies came in, the squares came in, the fudge came in. We sold absolutely everything we had. And uh, we only had two people in the kitchen at a time, so we were safe. And we made $1,400 for the church. Thank you, everyone, for contributing or uh, baking, buying, whatever you did to make it a success. All right, thank you, Sandra. All right, I am going to 